Okay, so you're running lots, it's the summertime, and you're trying to burn off extra calories at the same time. You might have a marathon in place for the end of summer or into fall, but now your knees are so sore from running that you don't know what to do. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you some simple tips on how to prevent your knees from getting hurt and so that you can continue to train and you could finish that marathon when you get there. So number one I would tell you is that you need to reduce your load and go low impact for a week. So what does that mean? If you're normally running, let's say five miles a day, you know, you might need to reduce that down to one mile and then focus on walking, okay? See if that helps by just reducing it from five miles down to one. So walk for four and then run for one. You might even have to just walk for three and then run for one. It's gonna be a trial and error, see how you feel, but use the next day as to how you feel is this you should either scale up or scale down. If you're sore right away after that run and it doesn't go away that night, there's a good chance that it's still too much. So you have to further reduce and you might end up just being walking. Now here's the thing, when it comes to cardio training, you don't necessarily have to run to build endurance. You can also start taking up swimming right? The pools are more free during the summer because they don't have like kids activities. And so you might not be a good swimmer, but guess what? That heart rate's going to stay high, which means that you're working the heart capacity. You're working the lung capacity. You're still using your legs, but now you're using your upper body so you can maintain your cardio. And then once the knees start to feel better, that's when you can go back to modified running. You can also take up biking, right? Find a track like Birds Hill if you're in Winnipeg, or find a loop that you can continuously bike for so that you're monitoring your heart rate and your heart rate is matching that at to which you would have it as high during a run. But either way, you have other opportunities to keep that heart rate high. Now when it comes to the gym, you might want to come in still, and I would definitely encourage you to do so. I would just say make sure that you're not doing any jumping for sure. So jumping is the, the hardest thing on your body, okay, when it comes to getting results, but also when it creates the most amount of muscle damage or muscle teardown. And you want a certain level of muscle teardown so that you can build up new muscle, but when you have an injury, it's a whole different ballpark, okay? So when you come into the gym, you might not do any of the jumping stuff but you can still do the resistance stuff. So for instance, instead of doing a jump squat, you can do a resisted squat. Now, if that still bothers your knees, then you might have to reduce the load, get rid of all the weights and just focus on body weight. And honestly, even if you just do a little, a little something is better than a lot of nothing. So just moving your body through those range of motions, just going through the movements, your body's going to stimulate the healing. It's gonna encourage blood flow into that area. It's gonna bring in brand new cells to regenerate, repair, and recover from your knee injuries. But you're gonna scale yourself up. So if you can only do body weight, then you need to then go into the strength component, but lighter weights, then you go into heavier weights, and then you can go back to jumping. But again, you're gonna use that day and the next day to determine whether or not you went too far, okay? But a little bit of movement is always better than nothing. And then the last but not least is that there are supplements out there, and especially if you're, I would consider you an athlete now, if you're training for like an hour a day, because you know athletes are probably doing two or three, and they would be taking all the supplements, they'd be getting massages, they'd be having cold tubs, hot tubs, treatments, they'd be getting all the supplements for free, as such, you need to treat yourself exactly like you would as an athlete. This is now your full-time gig. You obviously have a job, but now you're challenging your body full-time. So now I would consider you an athlete, okay? This supplement right here, which is called the Joint Pro Formula, we do have it here at the gym. I love this type of supplement stack. This is one of the only ones that I was able to find to replace the old school tissue rejuvenator. Uh, it's got a lot of the ingredients in there which provide specific nutrients to the tendons and ligaments to create strength. It also encourages more fluids into the joint, so there's less grinding between the joints, specifically into your knees. And then it's got a bunch of anti-inflammatories, but they're natural anti-inflammatories included into the supplement. So how would I recommend for you to take this? I would recommend for you to take one after each training. So if you're doing a workout at the gym, take one after. Then if you go for a run or a bike or swim, take one after, and then I would go and tell you to take one right before you go to bed. 
The other supplements that I'd recommend when you're doing higher intensity training, especially cardio training, you're going to need to replenish your electrolytes. And as such, you're going to need to replenish a lot of the amino acids. And so instead of the amino acids getting pulled from your muscles, you're going to want the amino acids to become in exogenously from a drink called EAAs. Now we've got these EAAs in the gym. They absolutely tastes fantastic. I personally have the lime, grape, and the orange one at home, and I alternate between all three, especially now it's my high training. I'm in tennis, you can tell how dark I am. So I'm constantly moving, my body's constantly like sore, and as such, I'm using these EAAs because they have electrolytes, and they also have the amino acids that are required to keep those muscles strong and repair. And actually, here's a fourth and bonus tip, and I'm gonna get Jerome to pan down, because I would recommend that you get some heat packs, okay? I love these heat packs, so we'll get you to pan down here if we can. I love these heat packs, see, you didn't even know, look at that, socks and sandals and everything, right? So I got these heat packs, they're just wraps, I warm them up for about a minute in the pack like this. I keep them on my knees all day, and usually my IT bands or my patellar tendons are so trashed after I do a workout here and play like tennis for two hours, but lately, ever since I've been using these heat packs and keeping them on my knees throughout the day, Oh my goodness, I have no aches, no pains. I'm able to play every single day and still lift heavy at the gym. So there we have it guys. There's my three super simple tips that you can implement right away to keep you running, to keep you moving, to keep you healthy, and to keep you happy. We'll see you on the next video.